This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Some of you may think you have got some of the hugest problems in the whole world, and maybe you do, but I'm telling you what, little adjustments. Little adjustments can sometimes make an unbelievably big difference in your life. I'm going to talk to you about one little, 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 little tiny thing that you can do. You may have to do it every day, but one little tiny thing you can do that can literally just turn your life completely around. How many of you would like to know what it is? Okay. Attitude. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can see that's a felt need. <laughs> Now, our attitude is our thought life turned inside out. It's something that's in us, but everybody sees it. <laughs> it comes out in facial expressions, comes out in body language. You don't have to open your mouth and everybody knows you're disgusted. Or how about this one? <sighs> Impatience. Can't you move along faster than what you are? It's the posture that we decide to take toward our life. The posture we decide to take, the way we decide to look at our circumstances and our situations. It affects how we feel, how we behave, and ultimately, the whole quality of our life. Your attitude is yours, and nobody can force you to have a bad one if you don't want to. I'm going to say that again. Your attitude is yours, doesn't belong to somebody else, and nobody can make you have a bad attitude if you don't want to have a bad attitude. Nobody. Amen? How many of you actually really believe that? See, maybe we don't think about it like that. We think, well... You know, I'm just like this because I've got all these problems. But being like that doesn't solve your problems. It doesn't change your problems. What it does is it makes you miserable and probably most of the people around you. Nobody enjoys being around somebody for very long that's got a bad attitude. A new employee went to work at a company and he asked his supervisor, do you think that I'm going to enjoy working here? And he said, well, how'd you like your last place? And he said, oh, I didn't like it at all. Didn't like my boss. Didn't like the people I worked with. Hated the work. They didn't treat me good. I didn't like it at all. And he said, well, you know, you're probably going to feel the same way about this place. <laughs> A few days later, another new employee started and he said the same thing to his supervisor. Do you think I'm going to like working here? And he said, well, how'd you like your last place? He said, oh, it was a great place to work. He said, I loved it. I loved the people. I loved my job. I was so sorry when they went out of business. And he said, you know what? You're going to love it here too. <laughs> so you see, it really wasn't about the job. It was the person. And you know what? Somebody that has a bad attitude, they're going to find something wrong with everything, everywhere. Like, I don't, have, I don't care how good it is. They're going to find something wrong with it. And somebody that has a good attitude, it's just really hard to make them unhappy. Amen? Come on, don't look at me like you don't need this, because... <laughs> All right, another little quick story. Two twins, one very positive, one very negative. I mean, like very negative and very positive. They were just like two opposite ends of the spectrum. And the, birth, the birthday was coming up and the mom had been real concerned about them. And so she wanted to talk to the doctor about this situation. Is there any reason why they're so different? Is there anything I can do? And so the doctor said, well, let's, let's do an experiment. He said, give, give the boy that's 
real negative, like the greatest present that you could think of to give him. And give the boy that's uh, real positive one of the worst things that you could imagine, something there's no way he could be happy with. So on the birthday, the, the real negative boy got, I mean, the most up-to-date, cutting-edge bicycle. I mean, it was just phenomenal. And he looked at it and said, well, I'll probably break my leg. <laughs> and the real positive boy got a box of manure. And he could, looked at it for a minute and thought, and then after a few minutes, he said, okay, come on. Where is it at? Where is it at? And they're like, where's what? He said, you can't fool me where there's this much manure. There's got to be a pony somewhere. <laughs> now, some people are just kind of show up on planet Earth with a better attitude than some others do. And I had to work at this. I grew up in a very negative situation and my, my, just my natural temperament would lean more toward being deeper and trying to fix everything that's wrong and seeing what's wrong. And I just want to tell you that anybody can work with the Holy Spirit to form a habit of having a good attitude if you really want to. Some of you may have to work at it a little bit more than others, but we're all like that in some area. Every single one of us have to work at some things a little bit more than we might other things. And God will always help us. Your attitude is yours, and nobody can force you to have a bad one if you don't want to. In Ephesians chapter four, verse 23, it says, be constantly Somebody say constantly. constantly. Renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. So if you have a lot of problems, which some of you do, this is gonna be a daily decision. If you tend to be a little more toward the negative side in your thinking or a little bit more melancholy in your personality, then this will have to be a daily decision for you. But it's worth it in the long run because to have a sour, bad attitude just absolutely makes you miserable. Now, airplanes have something called an attitude indicator. Not altitude indicator, attitude indicator. And it shows the position of the plane, the wings of the plane to the horizon. And the horizon would represent average or normal. So if you're right on target with that, then you're in an average and a normal position. When the airplane is climbing, it's said to have a nose high attitude. And if the airplane is diving, it's said to have a nose down attitude. So when our attitude is up, we have an above average life. And when it's down, our life will be below average. To change the altitude of the plane, the pilot simply makes a little adjustment. And you know what? I have found out that a lot of life is about just making little adjustments on a regular basis. My life can get out of balance and maybe I'm working too hard and not resting enough and I can just make a little adjustment and change that. Or maybe I'm starting to get lazy and I'm just sitting around too much and I need to get up and get a little bit more done and I can just make a little adjustment and make that happen. Now look at me, I'm gonna say something important. I think everything I say is important, but this is important. <laughs> Somebody else is not gonna come along and fix our problems. <laughs> Thank you for those three people that agree with me. The Bible gives us the answers to what to do. And the Holy Spirit gives us the strength and the ability to do it. And I'm telling you, some of you may think you have got some of the hugest problems in the whole world, and maybe you do, but I'm telling you what, little adjustments. Little adjustments 
can sometimes make an unbelievably big difference in your life. I think a lot of times we look for these huge, big, deep answers to our problems, and sometimes, I don't know, maybe you feel rotten all the time and you just need to drink more water. I mean, honestly. I mean, people can just feel absolutely terrible just because they're dehydrated and they don't know it. And so many times it is just a simple thing that you can do, a simple something that you can change. And if we really listen to the Holy Spirit, he'll show us what those simple somethings are in our life. Now, I'm gonna talk to you, well, first of all, let me tell you this. John Maxwell said, circumstances don't make you what you are, they reveal what you are. Amen? They don't make you what you are, they reveal what you are. And then I said this, misery is an option. You don't have to be miserable if you don't want to. And that's something I would like you to write down somewhere and remember when you go home, every time you're miserable, you can say, I'm choosing this. You don't like that, do you? Okay, well, write it down anyway. Maybe you'll like it better by tomorrow. I wanna to talk to you tonight about learning to live with an attitude of celebration. Celebration. We don't celebrate enough. And I mean, we can start to just, if you start celebrating little things, then someday you'll have something big to celebrate. You gotta celebrate every little thing that you can find to celebrate, and it will just drive the devil mad. Because he wants us to be sour and have a bad attitude and never appreciate anything that God or anybody else does for us, focus on our problems. I personally have a lot of things that I can celebrate right now. I've been married to the same man for 50 years. Five oh, not 15, 50 years. I haven't just been married 50 years, I've been married to the same man for 50 years. And I still love him. Amen. Now, it goes without saying that all of those 50 years were not easy, that there was a lot of things that happened, maybe opportunities along the way to give up, a lot of great things, a lot of challenging things. But you know what? It's wonderful when you come to the point where you can say, I did it. I didn't quit. I didn't give up. We're celebrating 50 years of being married. We have four grown children that are all serving God. All here tonight, all serving God. We have 11 grandchildren that all love Jesus. 10 of the 11 are here tonight. And they, I, didn't, I didn't pay them to come. I didn't make them come. One of them flew in from California. They're here because they love Jesus and they love their grandma. Amen. I've been teaching the word for 42 years. That's worth celebrating. In the last three years, I've had two hip replacements and a back surgery, and I'm still walking around. I'm celebrating. I've written 116 books. 116. And still writing. I made 67 mission trips out of the country to the mission field. But you know, the most important thing is how God has changed my life. Oh my gosh, when I think about how he has changed me. And yes, I've got a long way to go. But you know what? I'm not thinking about that this weekend. I'm not thinking about how far I have to go. And I don't want you to think about how far you have to go. I don't want you to think about what's wrong with you. I don't want you to think about all your weaknesses and all your flaws. I want you to find something that God has done in you, something that he has changed in you, and I want you to celebrate and focus on that. And I, wa I want you to listen to me and I'm gonna tell you why. This is not just a happy, clappy, let's get together and have a big party and see how loud we can shout. There's a purpose in this, and I'll tell you why. And I really believe that God is showing me this. There is power in celebrating. 
It's powerful when we celebrate. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The devil doesn't want your stuff. He wants your joy. If he can take our joy, then he's got us right where he wants us. No wonder Jesus said, in the world there will be tribulation, there will be trouble, there will be distress, and his answer to the whole thing was, cheer up. <laughs> I kind of like, I like to put John 16, together with John 14, 27, where Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. So if you want to give the enemy a big black eye, just calm down and cheer up, and you're a winner in life. Amen? You know, it takes a long time to get this, and I guess I'm old enough now that I've got it, and I can't tell you how many times, sometimes in a week, I just say, I am not getting upset about that. I just, I'm not doing it. You know why you finally find out it doesn't change anything? It doesn't change anything for you to be sad all day. It doesn't change anything for you to be mad all day. It doesn't change anything for you to be sour all day and have a bad attitude. It changes you, but it does not change your circumstance. But I can tell you what, there's power in joy, and there's power in being thankful when you're hurting, and there's power in celebrating little tiny victories in your life. Oh, I've already planned my celebration for Saturday when this is over. <laughs> you know why? Because I'll be tired. You will have gotten out of me everything that I've got to give, and I will be tired. I know where I'm going to eat. I know what I'm going to eat when I get there. <laughs> and people who know me are not surprised by that. But And it's a place that has mm, the best chocolate cake. Oh, and the most wonderful gelato. And yes, it's a restaurant that has pasta, lots of pasta. I'm not eating spinach on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and I'm going with some of my most favorite people. Celebrating can be anything from a huge party and a feast to just sitting down with somebody that you really enjoy but do it as a focus. I'm doing this because I'm celebrating a victory that God has given me. And not only does it help you, but it gives honor to God. You know what one of our biggest problems are? We're constantly wanting God to do something else for us, and we don't bother to celebrate and be thankful for the things that he has already done. I'm not saying this in any way to be insensitive, but I really believe that sometimes we don't leave our problems alone long enough for God to get a chance to work on them. The Bible says, cast your care on him and he will care for you. And it'll be good for you just to say, I'm, I'm not gonna think about everything that's wrong. I just am gonna find something good and celebrate that thing. Amen, can you do that? And I want you to get even more excited about it. Here, you know, here's the thing. I don't have a message that's going to get rid of all your problems. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I do. I don't have any message that I can preach and say, now you go home and you do this and you won't ever have any more trouble in life. I won't tell you that because I don't think that that's biblical and I don't think that it happens. But I do believe that I can teach you and tell you things that are in the Bible, that have been proven out in many people's lives, that will make you such a powerful person that you can go home and live above the problems that you have. That doesn't mean that you won't have them, but they can't have you. There's a difference in you having a problem and a problem having you. Amen? I'm going to give you a homework assignment. And I hope that you'll do this. I've been doing this, and I, I think it's going to make a huge difference in your life. I want to ask you if you will take five minutes every night, maybe when you go to bed and it's quiet, if you're one of these people that 
your head hits the pillow and you fall asleep, then I guess you better do it sitting up. I'm not like that. I can, I can think a little bit when I go to bed. And you know, sometimes the stuff we think about in bed at night and the stuff we think about early in the morning is the stuff that gets us in trouble. <laughs> But I am so convinced after studying this and just talking to a few people and the way I feel about this inside, I feel like by now I can tell when I'm saying something that God really wants said. I believe with all my heart that we do not think nearly enough about the amazing reality of who we are in Christ what it means to be made right with God through the blood of Jesus. What it means, I mean, they had one feast that they called the days of all, and I think for 10 days they repented. We can get it done now in just one sentence. I mean, we live in such amazing times under the grace and the mercy and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You are gonna live forever. You are going to live forever. And it's not gonna be like it is now. It's gonna be wonderful. Amen? Absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna ask you to lay in, just take five minutes and lay in bed at night and just think. I'm not ever really gonna die. I'm gonna leave here. But I'll be ready by the time I go. And man, What's it going to be like when Jesus meets me at that gate? What is it going to be like? Oh my gosh, that's going to be so good. And while I'm here, I've got the guidance of God in my life. Here's what I believe. I believe if you think more about the spiritual realities of what you have in Christ, I mean, really, in light of eternity, how important is all the things we get upset about? How important is it, really? And you know what? God will help you with your problems. I, I mean, I can, I promise you, God will help you with your problems. I can't promise you how long it'll take. I can't promise you exactly when it will be or how he will do it. I can't even 100% promise you they'll go away. But if they don't go away, God will give you the grace and the strength to deal with it. Amen. God is faithful. He is faithful. How many of you will do that homework assignment? You'll just take five minutes, just lay in bed and think about just, and maybe just think something like, God, I wonder how many accidents you saved me from today. I wonder how many times there's a thief roaming around the neighborhood and they just for some reason, just look at our house and think, no, nah, I'm not interested in that one. Because your blood's protecting me. Amen? Amen? Are you ready to take on Joyce's homework assignment and thank God for what he's done instead of talking about our problems all of the time? Changing your attitude, yes, it's for everyone, changing my attitude, I know how hard it is, but doing that and keeping a spirit of celebration can help activate God's power in our lives in ways that we don't always even expect. Sometimes it is just incredible. Today, we want to offer you Joyce's book called 20 Ways to Make Every Day Better. This is a great book because you can choose one of the ways and focus on it for a while, then go to the next one all the way through 20. So you'll get that book as well as the Today's a New Day desktop devotional. It's a 31-day little devotional that you set up on your desk. You can read it every day, flip to the next one. You can use it whatever 31 days you want. You can use it over and over. These things will help you make those attitude adjustments that we all need to make and to keep gratitude and praise at the top of our list and on the forefront of our minds all the time. So check out these offers. We are so glad that you're with us and we'll be seeing you soon. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate today? 
Well, whether you're having a good day or not, Joyce Meyer wants to teach you 20 ways to make every day better. Practical advice that you can apply right now to make a big difference no matter how your day is going. Pick it up for you or to brighten someone else's day. Then, with God's help, turn bad days into good and good days into great. Today, we're offering Joyce's book, 20 Ways to Make Every Day Better, plus her 31-day desktop calendar, Today's a New Day, for your gift to the ministry of $30 or more. Go to JoyceMeyer.org or call us at 1-800-727-9673. I had this expectation that I could go into marriage and still be that fiercely independent person. Yeah. And marriage is all about becoming one flesh. You know, it's all about compromise. Eventually I said, do you not find me attractive? And he said, he was crying, I was crying. And he said, no, I don't. Join us and see what everybody's talking about at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. You have no idea what a beautiful thing this is. You see, we just talked to several children here who this is their only meal of the day. We talked to Rachel. She walks an hour and a half to school and an hour and a half home, and she wasn't eating at school. So she wasn't able to concentrate. She was tired. She was exhausted. Of course she didn't like school, but now these students they know they have a good meal every single day, and it's made such a big difference for them. And let me tell you what else. When you meet the physical needs, then you also begin meeting spiritual needs because we're teaching them about Jesus. There are children's churches here, and they understand that this food represents the love of God who sent us. We thank you so much for making this possible for all of these beautiful children and the difference that you're making, that they can have a future that's so much brighter because they can continue that education that will give them opportunities that they didn't even imagine possible before. So will you please join us? You can go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org, and you can do something that will change a life for a long, long time and share the good news of Christ. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org to share your prayer request or partner with us in sharing Christ and loving people all across the globe. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.